M0A Nation, are you familiar with the ins and outs of Class Echo airspace? What's happening, M0A Nation? Jamie and Matthew here. Today we're breaking down one of the most confusing types of airspace, which is Class Echo. Class E airspace can be challenging to understand for pilots because it doesn't always exist at the same altitude. Today, we're gonna to help you get a clearer understanding of what Class E is all about and how to find it on a sectional. I don't know about you, but whenever I first started learning mm -hmm. Class E airspace, it was actually very difficult for me to understand. Yeah, it's hard to visualize it when you, yeah. you're not familiar. It's like a whole different language you have to learn because you, you, you can't see it, right? Yeah. Class, you get a VFR sectional, you look on it, you can pull up class B, class C, class D, yeah. but where's class E? And then I sat down with my instructor and he goes, well, if you actually look at it, class E is actually everywhere. It's everywhere. It's, it's, yeah. it's kind of weird to wrap your mind around. Yeah, you get all these nuances on the sectional, some things are obvious, some things are not, but echo can be one of those that can be very challenging. So you'll notice several different colors, some shading, dashed lines, these all represent different types of class echo airspace in various locations. Let's take a look at an example. You might see areas that are magenta in color and have one side shaded. That shaded side indicates where the class echo starts at 700 feet above the ground level. Generally speaking, outside that area, the class echo starts roughly at 1200 feet AGL. You may hear this call be called domestic and route airspace, and that means that the class echo airspace exists at 1200 feet AGL unless otherwise designated by the sectional. These differences in shading tell you where the class echo begins, but there's more to this. Low altitude federal airways, or what we like to call them Victor airways, are depicted as blue shaded lines on the VFR sectional and are also class echo airspace. They extend up from 1,200 feet AGL all the way up to, but not including 18,000 feet MSL. Think of the Victor Airways like highways in the sky. They extend from VOR to VOR and pilots can use them to easily follow along just like you would on a highway on a road trip across the country. Next up to discuss are class echo surface areas. These are really important because they provide an area of controlled airspace for terminal operations that don't have a control tower. For example, here's an uncontrolled airport in class golf airspace, but we can see the class echo surface area designated here. These areas extend from the surface up to a specified altitude, often used for IFR departures, arrivals, and instrument approach procedures. They're meant to protect the airspace to ensure the aircraft can safely transition between uncontrolled and controlled environments. I see it all the time where we're flying into an airport and yeah. you can actually look on the chart and see the arrival corridor yeah. where a ILS approach, something yeah. along those lines where they can come into. It helps you start to visualize everything, right? Yeah. So you, all those corridors, once you start putting the pieces together, you can actually understand, oh, that's why that's there. Yeah. That's why that's there. And one thing I like to do with my students is actually lay out a sectional chart right across the table mm -hmm. and just start pointing to airspace. And I'll be like, hey, what's that airspace right there? And I'll point to like a really obvious one, like yeah. a class delta. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, it's a class delta airspace. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say what altitude you're at. Like, oh, it could be multiple yeah. different airspaces, right? Yeah. Could be a delta on the ground, but what, is it an echo above that? Correct. Who knows? Yeah. Could be a Charlie shelf that's right there. So I like to do these rocket ship scenarios, is what we call them. And basically you start all the way on the ground and you work all the way up and you name every single airspace as you go. This helps your students really visualize what's going on and understand there's more nuance than just what the lines are on the paper. There's a lot more stuff going on there typically. Let's take a look at a quick example. If we're on the ground at an uncontrolled airport class golf uh, called Zephyr Hills. Now imagine a rocket takes off and it goes straight up. When departing the airport, it would actually start in uncontrolled class golf airspace up to 700 feet. Now we can see the shaded magenta ring indicating that echo transition. So now we know that starting at 700 feet, we're entering class echo airspace. Since there is no overlying airspace depicted, we know that rocket would remain in class echo airspace 
up to, but not including, 18,000 feet MSL. At 18,000 feet MSL, we would enter Class A airspace. Also an airspace that's not depicted on the sectional chart, right? It's true. Now, if we want to be really nitpicky, Class Alpha airspace actually ends at flight level 600. So what, what would we enter after that? Well, we would go right back into Class Echo airspace. That is all the way to space. That is interesting, <laughs> but you know what? I think we're going to leave that to NASA. Yeah. We'll leave it up to them. I'm down with that. Before you fly in class Echo airspace, make sure you're aware of all the minimum weather requirements. VFR pilots must maintain a visibility and cloud clearance of three statute miles visibility and at least 500 below the clouds, 1,000 feet above the clouds, and 2,000 feet horizontally when flying under 10,000 feet MSL. Remember, these are just minimums, and honestly, three statute miles is not a lot. Many pilots should increase their own personal numbers when they make their own personal minimums. That's ultimately how you're going to be comfortable and safe. A couple other tips for you though. No specific pilot certification is required to fly in these areas. Student pilots are welcome. However, keep in mind that no separation services are provided to VFR traffic by air traffic control. If you enjoyed these easy to follow videos, you should check out the full M0A online ground school courses. The M0A team would love to extend a free trial to check out our online ground school courses. We have everything from private, instrument, commercial, all the way to flight instructor and boot camp courses to help you brush up on your aviation knowledge. Take a free trial, no strings attached at m0atrial.com and find out how the M0A aviation mastery method can help you achieve your flying goals today. And remember, a good pilot is always learning.